Coal has been Michigan's main source of power for over 50 years, fueling our factories and providing electricity for the entire state. It has been our most important resource, and without it, we would be virtually powerless. In 2010, Michigan got 60% of its energy from coal. Importing costs $1. billion annually. 100% of the coal was imported and using oil transportation. Coal is also linked to illnesses such as lung disease and asthma. Over one year, just in the L.A. County, the Daily News did a study that estimates 3,500 deaths and over 200,000 asthma attacks due to coal plants. Simple civilians can also be negatively affected by coal plants because their emissions create smog, like you can see in this picture. Not only are simple civilians affected by factory emissions, animals in their habitats are as well. Rivers and lakes are filled with factory runoff as fish populations are destroyed. Smog kills insects, which create a ripple in the food chain, ultimately destroying our environment. Our polar ice caps are also affected by coal. Global warming is causing our poles to deplete at a rate that would have Al Gore in a total meltdown. In recent years, the world has seen its coastline slowly fade away as seawater is now beginning to push inland. Global warming has also increased the temperature of our oceans, which have, which have caused severe hurricanes in our recent past. On the bright side, the pollutants cause Michigan's beautiful sunsets, so at least we have something to look forward to. Recently, states have been attempting to pass legislature to decrease our use of coal and increase our use of renewables to try and deplete the carbon footprint that we are so eagerly stomping into this earth. Michigan saw a large uproar in the elections this year for a proposal that tried to solve such a problem. Proposal 3 was an act of legislature that, if enacted, would have created an energy mandate for electrical companies to increase the use of renewable energy to 25% by 2025. Proponents of the proposal predict that it would have brought up to 94,000 jobs to Michigan. These jobs would consist of constructing the thousands of windmills and hydro plants needed to meet the 25% goal. More jobs mean more popularity for Michigan, which would bring more people into the state. Supporters believe that the high cost of this proposal would be easily paid off by taxes, which, as expensive as it may seem, would be diluted across each citizen because of the projected rising population. Another way this proposal was supposed to decrease the price of taxes would be to enact a law saying that energy companies would not be allowed to increase energy rates by more than 1% per year. The enactment of this proposal would steer our energy production towards a better environment by using solar power, wind power, hydropower, and biomass. The combined usage of all these sources could make up for the absence of the coal usage. The other great thing about renewable energy is how clean it is. There are no health risks involved with any form of renewable energy. Rivers and lakes can finally be relieved of the coal runoff, killing fish populations and other species. We can also have cleaner air to breathe, but unfortunately our sunsets won't be as magnificent. The main focus of this proposal is to update and intensify the current energy mandate that requires only 10% renewable energy by 2015. Supporters of Proposal 3 said that the current energy plan isn't doing enough for the environment and that it is too weak of a movement when we need to start acting now. Unfortunately for those supporting the proposal, it was knocked down by a landslide. 64% of voters opposed it and 36% supported it in the 2010 election. So why was it so unpopular? Proposal 3 sounded like a good idea. What's not good about more renewable energy? Well, there's a couple of things that are important to consider. Uh, the cost of renewable energy is an important factor. For one, the expenses of the proposal were way too high and would have cost Michigan citizens up to $12 billion in taxes. I've often heard folks say that wind is free, right? Well, in fact, wind is free, although it's somewhat unreliable, but Turning wind into electricity can be very expensive. And again, that's not to say that renewable energy is not a good thing, it is, but it needs to be part of a balanced portfolio so that the state's energy supply can remain affordable and reliable. To get an idea of just how expensive this project is, the cost of one windmill can go anywhere between $1.3 and $2.2 million. Our electric rates would increase to 16.2%. It is something that currently we simply cannot afford.
Another component of Proposal 3 includes putting the new energy requirement into the Constitution. This is not a good idea because, if there was an unforeseen problem or side effect of the proposal, a constitutional amendment would be required to cancel it, something that takes a lot of time and energy to achieve. One of the often cited and very real troubles presented by Proposal 3 was enshrining energy policy in the state's constitution. I think we're all familiar with how dynamic the energy environment is. We've seen natural gas go from $14 down to under $2 in a very short period of time. And that's not to say that natural gas should fuel all of our electricity needs, but it is an example of how dynamic the energy environment it is. And we as a state need to be ready to respond to this changing energy environment. Our legislature is the perfect body to think through that and make long-term decisions for the state. But having it enshrined in the Constitution ties our hands in ways that prevent our ability to address the dynamic nature of energy supply. Plus, making the percentage higher would mean more windmills and hydropumps, which, clustered together, are an eyesore. Beautiful farmland will be turned into wind farms, which are efficient yet ugly, deterring tourists instead of attracting them. One other thing to think about with a renewable energy standard at 25% is the fact that that amount of energy could only come from a number of wind turbines close to 3,000. And it's hard to imagine, but 3,000 wind turbines dotting the Michigan landscape would be a significant adjustment to the state that has so much natural beauty, and one that I think we'd all like to think twice about. Also, studies on biomass and hydropower are still being conducted, so it is more logical to stay on this course and keep conducting studies. For all of these reasons, the recently advocated Proposal 3 was not the right direction for the state to go in, and it showed in the election. The proposal is simply too expensive, too complicated, and too big of a step to be taking this early. A $12 billion spend for a renewable energy portfolio standard when we haven't even let the existing standard be fully implemented. In a state that needs to remain as competitive as possible for energy costs as well as all of our costs. Enshrining energy policy which needs to be flexible in, a const in our constitution and the potential impact to our Michigan landscape all add up to a bad idea. The real solution to our environmental dilemma is already here. In 2008, an order was carried out to successfully enact the first renewable energy mandate. This mandate stated that companies are forced to receive 10% of their energy from renewable resources using things such as windmills and hydro pumps. This was the original movement for states to go greener as several mandates were passed across the country. Soon after, companies such as Consumers Energy began to litter the state with windmills and other forms of renewable energy generators. They can be seen today on the east side of the highway while driving past Ithaca. Hundreds of rotating wind turbines cover the once flat farm. The current mandate has increased Michigan's use of renewables to 5%, which is a good start for the state. By increasing your use of renewable energy and depending less on coal from other states, Michigan can now become more economically stable. The cost of importing coal is a major expense that has been suffocating Michigan's economy for over 50 years. Some supporters of Proposal 3 claim that this standard has proven to be too little too late. They claim that this mandate isn't even making a dent in our environmental health and that, and that we can do better faster. They have, they have a point too, some supporters of the 10 by 15 mandate say. The more renewables, the better. However, they also claim that Proposal 3 is the right decision for Michigan, just not the right path yet. Research is still being done to progress the efficiency and productivity of our renewable resources. It is difficult to even get permission to place renewable generators on civilian property. The best path for the future of Michigan is to wait out our current mandate and then go from there. I think we all agree that renewable energy is a good thing. It's a good thing for the environment, and it's a good to have a balanced uh, fuel mix for our energy needs in the state of Michigan, which is exactly why there's an... Uh, a renewable energy standard in place as a product of the 2008 energy law in Michigan, which requires that the state's utilities procure 10% of their energy from renewable sources by 2015, 
we're solidly on that path and it'll make a big difference for the state. From Michigan. <laughs> For Michigan.